I am Officer Holly, and this is Officer Rowena, and this is our friend Sammy, and we actually work for Council. But not in the team that collect your bins, we actually work for the Animal Management Team. We work hard to make sure that we can return your lost pets home to you and that everyone in the community is safe and happy. This is an animal rehoming centre. Here we take care of lost animals while we try to reunite them back to their families. You can also come here if you're looking for a new animal to adopt and you can make them a part of your loving family. And give them a beautiful home. We're here to teach you a few rules. Rules are to teach you how to have a happy, safe and healthy pet. And if a pet do go missing, we were able to return it back to you. Here in Queensland, there is a law that sets out some rules that pet owners need to follow. It's called the Animal Management Cats and Dogs Act of 2008. If pet owners don't follow these rules, not only could their pet get lost and not be able to be found, they could be fined for doing the wrong thing, just like if they speed in their car. Having a pet means that you're responsible for that animal, just like your parents are responsible for you. That means we need to ensure that we're providing those animals lots of healthy food, lots of clean drinking water, regular checkups with the vet, which is also known as the animal doctor, and also loads of exercise. And very importantly, don't forget, check the water every day. Fresh water in those bowls every day, especially in summer, because the water evaporates and it gets warm. Different dogs need different amounts of exercise, but unless they're getting old, feeling sore or sick, every dog will need a good walk every day. Exercise stops them from getting too bored, and just like us, it's really good for both their bodies and their minds. Although a pet cat needs the same thing that a pet dog does, you don't have to take them out for a walk each day. Cats can get their exercise through playing with their toys, or using a scratching post while inside your home. As well as these general rules, there are five important things we need to remember to be a responsible pet owner. Rule number one, clean up after your pet. No one wants to step on dog poo and get it on their shoes. It's smelly and it can carry germs. <gasps> Always make sure you carry at least two bags to pick up dog poo when you go out with your dog for a walk. And remember, to bag it, tie it, and bin it. To clean up the poo without getting it on yourself or anywhere else, put the poo bag over your hand, pick up the poo, carefully turn the bag inside out, and tie it off using the handles before throwing it in a general waste or designated dog poo bin. Rule number two having a secured fence. You need a secured fence to keep your dog inside and make sure your dog cannot get over it or underneath. You must not be able to dig under the fence and that will keep your puppy safe inside his home. We need to keep our cat safe as well. And to keep our cat safe, we need a, we need a cat enclosure and that will keep our cat safe inside from getting harm or damaging the environment. Yeah, it also stops them from getting lost and make sure that they're always at home where we want them to be. Rule number three, always walk your dog on a lead unless you're at a dog off-leash park like this one. Whenever you take your dog for a walk, they need to be on lead and you need to make sure that it's securely clipped to either a collar or a harness. Your dog's collar should be a flat collar like this one. Some dog owners use chains that tighten when you pull on them or have prongs that dig into the dog's neck. These collars can hurt the dog and should never ever be used. Keeping your dog on leash keeps both your dog and other people around you safe. Council provides dog parks just like this one where you can walk your dog off leash in this permitted space. Now you must make sure even if you are in an off leash park that you are keeping an eye on your dog just to make sure that they're not playing too roughly with any other dogs so that you can intervene if you need to. It's still your responsibility when a dog is off leash to keep an eye on him at all times. Rule number four, microchipping. Microchipping is a very important requirement for your cat and dog. It is law to have an animal's microchip. This way, 
we can get them back to you because it has all your details on there. Your name, your address and contact details. So if your dog or cat go missing, we can get it back to you. This is our scanner. But if you have a look at that tiny little grain of rice in there, and that's the microchip which we put in the dog. And then this scanner will read the microchip. This way, if your dog gets lost, we can get the dog back to you. Rule number five. Queensland law tells us that every family need to make sure that they register their dog with their local council. If not, they might receive a fine, which is no good. Some councils also need you to register your cat, so you really need to make sure you check your local area to see if you do or don't. When you register with council, they send you a tag like this. This tag is like when you write your name on your school backpack or pencil case to make sure that if you lose it, it can find its way back to you. By microchipping and registering your pets, you're ensuring that any lost pets can become found pets. Registration also helps council run rehoming centres so that we can keep finding lost pets and getting animals that need homes adopted out. Registration must be renewed every year and council will send you out a reminder to make sure that you don't forget. This is called a catch pole. These ones we, we retrieve all dogs that's running loose because we don't know how friendly they are. This is a short one, but for a dangerous dog, we will use a longer stick so we keep our distance at a, keep us at a safe distance. This one is Sammy, our friendly little doggy. We can just go to her very easily, put it around her neck, and she won't hurt me, and we can retrieve and then take her to our van and off to our shelter to get her to a safe place. Sometimes, dogs might be recognised as dangerous or menacing dog because they have attacked another person or dog or made someone feel very scared. If this happens, there are three things that can show that it is a dangerous dog. Firstly, there will be signage on the fence of where the dog lives. Secondly, the dog will be wearing a special collar like this one or this one. If you see any collars that are similar to this, they both could demonstrate that that dog might be declared or menacing. Thirdly, they will have a tag on their collar, like this one, that shows that they are a dangerous dog. If you see any of these three signs, you should not try to pat this dog. And if you see them wandering the street without their owner, you need to let council know straight away so we can come and pick them up and keep you and the community safe. Having a furry friend as a part of our family can be such a rewarding experience. We just have to make sure that we do the five. Number one, make sure we always clean up after our pets, whether that's dogs or cats. Number two, make sure that we always keep our animals inside either our house or our fenced area. Number three, please make sure that if you're walking your dog, that your dog is on lead to keep you and everyone else safe. Number four, please make sure that your animal is microchipped. And number five, please make sure that your animal is registered. Just make sure you remember those five easy steps that we've laid out for you guys. And if you ever see one of us council officers out in the park, come and say hi, because we're just out in the community keeping you and your pets safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sammy says thank you. Hi, Sammy.